Hello, I'm Mr. B Bates One, and welcome back to another how to video. In today's video, we are taking a look at how to transfer files for Minecraft Bedrock Edition between the Xbox and the PC. Now, Minecraft on console is pretty much limited by the console only. The game itself works well, pretty much the same way as it does on PC. So if you have worlds on your Xbox that you want to add mods to, or if you want to add world templates, you know, all of this is actually possible. You can even use custom skins. However, that is a little bit janky. I will show you how it works, but it's a really weird method how to get around it. But before we get into that, we are on the road to 1K subscribers. We're doing really well at the moment. We've got 580 plus subscribers. We're really, really on the way to that 1K. Now, if you're enjoying the content, it would really, really help me out if you subscribe to the channel. And if you are really, really enjoying the content, please like and leave a comment on the video. Anyway, that's enough about subs. Let's get into today's video. There are a few different ways in which you can transfer files to the Xbox. Today, I'll be showing what I believe to be the easiest method to do this, which is going to be using a USB stick. Now, it doesn't have to be anything massive. Typically, Minecraft files are not that big, so you can use really small ones. It's just fine. But before we start doing that, though, we do need to make sure that the USB stick is right for the Xbox. So what you want to do first of all is plug your USB stick into your PC and navigate to the This PC section. Once here, simply right click on your USB device and click Properties. What we're looking for is the file system. You need to make sure this is NTFS. Now on newer USB sticks, uh, this is already a common format for them, but on older ones you may see it says FAT32. Now if this is the case, then all you simply need to do is right click on your USB stick and click Format. Then all you need to make sure is that NTFS is selected and then click start. Now, if you do have files on your USB stick, it will remove these. So if, you, if there is anything on there that you need to keep, make sure you take a copy first. Once the USB stick has been formatted and it is at NTFS, we can then start dropping our files onto it. Now, as you can see here, I've already created a bunch of folders on my USB stick for where I can put my files in. Now, the reason why I've done this is, is because, well, because it's easier to do it on PC than it is trying to use the on-screen keyboard on the Xbox. Now, as you can see, I've created a folder for behavior packs, Minecraft worlds, resource packs, skin packs, and world templates. Now all you need to do is simply copy the files into here. So as you can see in my behavior packs, I have my companion behavior pack. In the resource packs, I have my companion resource pack. Skin packs, I have the skin pack from my uh, skin pack tutorial. And in world templates, I have a void world with glitch boxes. And in Minecraft worlds, which is there nothing in there at the moment, but I'm gonna copy the world that you just saw me in in just a moment into this folder. If you already have Minecraft on the PC, then you can simply navigate to your Minecraft folder and just copy over the files from there. However, if you don't have Minecraft on your PC and the file you've downloaded is like a .mc pack, .addon, uh, .mc world, something like that, then you will need to use a zip program to open these files up. If we use my companion add-on as an example, you would simply right click on it and click open with and select your zip program. Now in this case, I am using WinRAR. Once WinRAR has opened the file, you just simply copy the folders out and place them into the respective folders on the USB stick. Now all the files are on the USB stick, we simply just plug it into the USB port on the Xbox. Once plugged in, you will get a notification from the Xbox that the device is ready to use. But before we can do anything, we first of all need to navigate to the store. The app that we're actually searching for is called the Advanced File Explorer. Now, as you can see, I already have this installed, so I don't need to download it again. But simply, once it's downloaded, you just click on it to launch the app. When you do open it for the first time, you will get a pop-up from the actual creator of the app. Uh, you simply just dismiss this pop-up, and then you'll be left with a screen like this. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to go to the little navigation menu on the side, and you're going to click on this icon here. Now, at the moment, as you can see, it does come up saying Unrecognizable Drive. Now, the reason for this is, is that this app doesn't have the permissions to read it. So what you're going to need to do is just click on any of the drives. It doesn't matter which one. And this is going to bring up a pop-up. Now, this simply, what this is going to do is it's going to download a different app. And this will give you full access to the Xbox files. And the reason why it's done this way is because you can't actually have an app in the Xbox store that accesses those sort of core drives. So it's done in this way to get around that. So all you have to do is just simply click open the Microsoft Store. Now, as you can see, I've already downloaded it once before. So I can simply just click on Install. And we simply wait for that to install. Now, before we go any further, this is a disclaimer. At this point, you will have unrestricted access to the core drives on your Xbox. That means you can break your Xbox very easily if you modify the wrong thing. So I highly suggest to not touch anything if you don't understand what it is. For the purposes of this tutorial, just simply follow the steps that I do and don't touch anything else and you shouldn't have to worry about it. But obviously, you're using this at your own risk. So now the disclaimer is out, out the way. Let's have a look what we need to do. 
So we simply click on the drives on the side again, and as you can see now, it is now listing all of the drives. So this is good news, this is means it's ready for us to access. But first of all, we don't want to go there. First thing we want to do is go to the USB stick. And we're going to do this by clicking on this icon here. And as you can see, these are now all the files that we copied onto the USB stick from the PC. So the first thing we're going to want to do is copy our files. Now what we want to do is we want to go down here to this little op option. This allows for multi-select. We just want to go up and start ticking all of the boxes. Once that's all ticked, simply select the menu and select copy. Once you've copied those, you want to go up to the star in the corner and you want to click on local. And then you want to click on packages. Before you do that, sorry, you need to undo that. And then click on packages. And you want to look for Minecraft. Now Minecraft's here on mine. Uh, you can change it by using this option here if it makes it a bit easier to read for you. But you're looking for Minecraft UWP console. And then from here, it's pretty much exactly the same as on PC. So we go to local state, games, com.mojang, and this is the main folder. Now, as you can see here, I've already got some folders in here, just purely because I've been messing around and testing it. Uh, but what, when you first start off, if you've never been here before, you'll just see the Minecraft PE, the Minecraft Worlds, and these two folders. But now we're here, we can simply do the menu, and we can click Paste. And this is then going to start copying over all the files. Once everything's done, it will say 100% complete here. And there we go, that's it. It's all copied over. It's all ready to use in your console version of Minecraft. Let's load up the game and take a look. So before we start then, there is some things that I actually noticed with the console version of Minecraft um, that makes it look like things aren't working. Uh, for example, if we go into settings and we actually go down to uh, storage, you will notice that in the storage, there isn't actually anything here uh, other than world templates to do uh, with what we copied over in terms of resource packs and behavior packs. It shows the world fine and it shows the world templates, just not not the resource packs or skin packs. The same goes under global. If you look under here, it doesn't actually list it. I, I think this must read it from somewhere else. I don't think it reads it from where we've copied it from. So they don't show up here. But don't worry, your packs are still available to use and we'll show that in just a moment. But while we're actually in this section here, uh, we may as well make a small change to our profile section. The two things we want to do is we want to turn these two options off. One is auto update unlocked packs and the other one is only allow trusted skins. Now the first one I've noticed with this turned on, when you try to access a world, it will try to update the pack from the store. Now obviously because the resource or add-on that we've added isn't in the store, it just sort of sits there and hangs forever. So by turning that off, it doesn't try to update it and it will just load the pack as it is. And with the skins one, it just so that you can use skins later on, which is what we'll show. So now that's done, let's take a look at creating a world and adding our resource and behavior packs. So we simply just click create new as normal. We click on create new world. Obviously, this is going to come up with the beautiful, nice uh, new screen. So I'm just going to switch this for creative just to make it easier for us. And then if we go down to resource packs, and then we go down to available packs, and under owned, you can see all the packs that we saw before, but you can also see the pack that I added earlier. So this is my companion resource pack. It's still in beta at the moment. This is an add-on that I've made. I showcased it briefly at the beginning of the year. Now all you have to do is just click activate to activate that pack. So if we go to behavior packs and do the same thing again, you can now see it there. Then simply just click create and there you go. You can now start playing your world with your add-ons. And just to see that in, in action, boom, and there you go. So you can see there's my companion. We'll bribe him, see how much, oh, he's one of a lot of emeralds, this guy. There we go, he's now one of us. Have that sword. And come with me. There we go. Good job, mate. Now, the same goes for worlds as well that you've copied over. So the world that I copied over that we were stood in with the intro was a survival world that I started that's got modded storage. Now, if I actually take a look at the big resource and behavior pack section here, you can actually see... That doesn't show up more information there, but you can actually see I've got advanced storage network in both behavior and uh, resources. Now, if I just flip this game to creative for just a moment and launch this one now this actual add-on uses game test so yes game test stuff does actually work on the xbox as well so here we are in our survival world we got now all of this is game test so if we were to as you can see so that's how easy it is now we can use any add-on you want in your worlds uh you can i don't want to know what the limit is i assume all add-ons will work i haven't tried them uh, but you never know if they don't that might be some limitation on the Xbox and on the game itself, but game test stuff works perfectly fine. You saw my companion one, that just that's not even using anything experimental at all. That's just using normal files, that works fine. 
And the same goes for world templates as well. We'll just take a quick look at that. When you click create new, you just simply scroll down to the bottom and you, as you can see, the template that we added in earlier is there. So we simply select that template. There we go. And then when we spawn in game, as you can see, we've got all our lovely glitch boxes here. Uh, glitch boxes, uh, glitch <laughs> items. So the final point then, custom skins. I did say it was a bit janky using custom skins and I'll show you why it is a bit janky. So let's just go back to the main menu. Now, when we go into dressing room, if we have a look here, we tried to create a new character. You will notice it lists the skins as normal, but I did actually copy my Iskel 85 skin over and you will notice that it is not there. I don't know the reason why it's not there, but the reason around it is even more weirder. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sign out of Xbox, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay on the home screen here and do so. I'm not gonna shut Minecraft down, I'm simply just gonna launch the menu. I'm gonna go over to here and we're gonna click sign out. Now, I'm using remote play, so the moment I do this, it is going to kick me out of remote play. However, what you're not seeing is, is that it will come up and says that the person who bought the game needs to be signed in. So simply you just click sign in, select the user and wait for it to sign in. So once you've signed in, then it'll take you back to this screen. Now Minecraft is still actually open. It's just simply minimized at the moment. So we will launch Minecraft as normal and it will come up like this. Now at the moment, because we signed out while Minecraft was still open, you can see that it now just says Steve in the corner. So what you do is you just go down to dressing room and it's gonna ask you to sign in. So we're gonna select my name and then Minecraft will simply reload. And now when we click classic skins, you can see that our skin pack is there. And as you can see, there is Iskal85. And now I can use him to my heart's content. Now there is a small drawback to this, however, though, it, the game really doesn't remember it. So what usually happens is, is that if you exit out of Minecraft and then you try to go back into it again, you are gonna get a failed notification. You can see we get a message saying it failed to load the character. And if we go into dressing room, it basically will never reload. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to delete it, create a bank character again. You can see it's not there. So you simply come back out again and then follow the steps again to sign out and sign back in again. Now I just wanna actually say a special thanks to Riley, who's a, a member of my Discord server. He actually explained to me how to do this. Initially, I didn't think it worked at all because I couldn't get it to work, but he explained to me about the signing in and out method. Uh, and when I tried it, it worked. So many thanks to him. And there we go. That is how you transfer files between your Xbox and your PC. You can use pretty much most mods, even game test mods, and it works perfectly fine on your Xbox. Just a little bit janky on the skins, that's all. Now, if you've got to the end of the video, I appreciate it, thank you very much. Please remember to like and share the video. I'm sure there's loads of people wanting to know how to do this, and obviously you guys sharing it makes a big help. Anyway, I'll catch you all guys next time. Bye.